CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... about to let you in on one of the best kept secrets of the United States government. An account of a conspiracy to steal ten million dollars from the U.S. sub-treasury in Philadelphia. This story has been kept under wraps for over a hundred years. It happened the year of the centennial, 1876. But it could have been yesterday. I can only hope that if there are any top-flight safecrackers or burglars listening in, that this tale won't give them any ideas. Potter there, Big Jake. When my boy Tommy told me he was in town, I was delighted. Ah, Noonan, jail sure agreed with you. You looking a pink. You know, Noonan, I got an idea for just the three of us. You, your son Tommy, and me. Oh, I'm that glad you're including him in. I want the boy to start getting himself some practical experience as soon as possible. Our mystery drama, The Ten Million Dollar Heist, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate Jr. and stars Joe Silver and Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Every Cracker Jack safe cracker aims for the jackpot. The pot of gold at the end of the robber's rainbow is a big pot filled with lots of gold or bills or at least negotiable securities. The year is 1876. Big Jake Erbman decided it might be a good time for him to leave his hometown, New York. He was well-known there. His accomplishments and a not-too-flattering photo, front and side view, were posted prominently in every post office in the land. He was doing so well in the big city that he made the Metropolitan Police's most wanted list. So he figured to leave town and take his talents elsewhere. Hey, welcome to Philadelphia, Big Jake. Welcome to the city of brotherly love. Brotherly love. Boy, I could sure use some of that, Tommy. Hey, well, what brings you to Philly? Well, you know, Tommy, your dad is the brother-in-law of the aunt of my dear departed second cousin. Uh, I knew he was related, Big Jake, but uh, I didn't know my dad was your aunt's what, second cousin. No, it's the other way around, I think. Yeah? Well, what does that make me? I never had figured it out. But look, at least you're kinfolk. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how's New York City? Oh, it's getting too hot. So I thought I'd take me into Philadelphia Exposition. You know, a hundred years of America. Gee, are we that old? Yeah. Hey, how old are you now, Tommy? Twenty-five. Yeah? Yeah. Got an education? Uh, no. <laughs> Only playing hooky. <laughs> I never went to school much. Yeah, well... You know what they're celebrating here in Philly? Uh... The Declaration of Independence, signed right here. Yeah, is that good? Very good. Is there money in it? Oh, it certainly was. The whole hit and caboodle of the USA was in it. Now, you got a lot of visitors coming into town for the exposition, right? Yeah. A man said to me the other day there that they're close to eight million. Yeah, well, that's why I'm here. Just a visitor, planning to celebrate... <laughs> You understand, Cousin Tommy? Uh, huh? Huh? Don't tell me, don't tell me. And if each one of those eight million visitors could celebrate one dollar's worth uh, with you, uh, <laughs> you'd end up with eight million dollars. Okay, what, what's, what's a scam, Big Jack? Uh, you know, you young fellows are always looking for the easy way to make a buck. A con, a chisel, a swindle, a flim flam. Uh, but if you want to make it in the big time, Tommy, there is no easy way. If you want to get ahead in this business, you got to work at it. Work hard. That is the American way. You're going to push over a bank. Correct. Now, I'll tell you this, Cousin Tommy. You talk about taking a dollar from each of eight million people, huh? Well, uh -huh. in my head, is an idea that's worth 
Ten million. Ten million? Uh, oh, what, what, uh, what, what? Maybe more. Uh, where? Where? Where did he start? Where I always do. At the top. Meaning? Tommy, my boy, as soon as I get settled in Philly, you and me are going to take ourselves a little stroll to enjoy the sights of the city, huh? Who knows? We may wend our way to the uh, U.S. Custom House. Uh, they don't have any money there. No, but they do right next door. Uh, you mean? Yeah, yeah. The sub-treasury building. Huh? You're going to case the treasury building. Why not? The way I figure it, if anybody's got a lot of money in one place, it's Uncle Samuel. Yeah. Huh? And I am to relieve him of a little of that uh, responsibility. Huh? Maybe a lot. You are standing in the main rotunda of the United States Customs House. Built in 1821, one of the finest examples of neo-Greek architecture in America. Tommy, come on, follow me. Yeah. Uh, uh, where are we going? Up these back stairs. Uh, 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 what's up there? Look, just walk up. Casual, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like you're a visitor, have himself a look around. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. One of the eight million. Right, right. Sure, sure, I get it. Hey, what's this door marked? Clock room. Here's son of a gun. <laughs> just like it said in the blueprint. Hey, are we going in? Hey, give me a nail file, cuz. Yeah. Wow! That clock! Look at those words! Here, shut, shut the door, shut the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest clock I ever seen from behind. Hey, hey, you know, I think it faces Chestnut Street. Yeah, yeah. What, what are you tapping on the back wall for, B.J.? Don't, don't make so much noise. I'm working. Yeah. yeah. Working, yeah. Shh, shh. Uh -huh. Yeah, just as I thought. <laughs> you know what is behind that wall. Ah, uh, let's see. 4th uh, uh, Street. No, no, no. No, no. 5th no, no. Street. Yeah, guess, again, guess again. Uh, behind that wall is a sub-treasury building. Oh. The custom house backs on to the sub-treasury building. See? I got a blueprint back in my room. You know what it shows? Uh, I'm going to stop guessing. I'm always wrong. It shows the vault is on the second floor of that building. Y you mean? Yes, oh. I mean. See, we organize ourselves and come up here on Friday afternoon, which is when it's closed to the public. The custom house people who work downstairs leave at 6. And over Saturday and Sunday, we punch ourselves a hole in that wall. <laughs> Would you believe it? Just a couple of feet from here where we're standing now is $10 million. <laughs> Behind that wall is $10 million. Yeah, yeah, in gold, silver, and bills. <laughs> $10 million. Hey, how can we carry it all out of there? Well, I need just one more man. A big, strong, healthy ex-con with guts. Hey, I got just a man for you, Big Jake. Yeah? Do I know him? You ought to know him. He's my dad, Big Tommy. Big Tommy Noonan? Yeah. Why, why'd you say so? Hey, when did he get out of Sing Sing? Yeah, he got sprung last night. I told him you was in town. Oh, uh, jeez. Uh, Big Tommy Noonan. Yeah. Well, by all means, let's go and talk to him. There's another bunch of tourists going down by there. See that? Uh -huh. You and me go down these stairs and walk over to them and mingle. No, in the sub-treasury at this very moment. See, boy, what I tell you. Big Jake Urban, put her there. <laughs> oh, when me boy Tommy told me he was in town... I couldn't be more delighted. Hey, Noonan, look at you. You're the picture of hell. Incarceration <laughs> certainly agrees with you. You know, I read all about you. You wouldn't kid an old man, would you, B.J.? No, you had the headlines in all them big New York newspapers. The Wild, The Sun. You know, that Chase Bank of, uh, of America job, that was a masterpiece. You read about it, B.J.? Yeah, I am proud to be a relative of yours, Noonan. It was a big mistake. Too many guys in on it. The split got too small. Some rat squeal. Noonan, listen. I got an idea for the three of us. You, your son, and me. 
Oh, I'm glad you're including him in. I want the boy to get some practical experience. He tells me you plan to crack a wall between the custom house and the sub-treasury. In a nutshell. You don't think even over a weekend that someone will hear it? Nah, all under the control, Noonan. I hung around all last weekend to make sure. Behind the custom house is the main post office, see? Huh? They work all weekend, and there's such a racket down there. I mean, mail coming in by postal wagons, drivers shouting at the top of their voices. Believe me, there could be a young earthquake and nobody would hear it. Let alone two flights up inside the clock room. Okay, BJ, I'd buy that. We just got to chip, chip, chip away till we get through that wall, see? Now, I got me a great sledgehammer, some cold chisels. No, 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 don't worry about tools. I know just where to lay my hands on them. Now, if we get through the wall... Don't say if, Noonan. Say when. We've cut through, okay? Okay. But how do you know the swag is right on the other side? Because this blueprint here tells me that's how I know. And how does it happen to be in your possession, B.J.? Well, I happen to be accompanying a friend who cleans the gas jets for the Pinkertons. So I was helping him, and I just happened to see this blueprint laying on a desk. So I just happened to help myself, you know, stuffed it under my overalls, right? I thought someday this little old blueprint might come in handy. Very handy indeed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see that, Tommy, son? Huh? Be prepared. Think ahead. All righty, BJ. Spread out the blueprint, and we'll have a gander. Tommy, lad. Yeah. I want you to go down to the cigar store at the corner and pick us up a handful of panatellas. Mm. You smoke, don't you, B.J.? Only the best. Oh. But uh, couldn't I do that after, Dad? I want to see what you two are planning. Don't you worry about that, Tommy. You just do as I tell you. Oh, but, Dad, how am I ever going to learn? Tommy! Yes, Dad, six panatellas on a way. Okay, now here. See, this blueprint shows us everything we have to know. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Ah, yes, the clock room. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The back of it is right onto the back of the sub-treasury vault. Right. Now, if we can't punch a hole in that wall between Friday night and Monday morning, we ought to give up the business. Ten million. How do you know the three of us can even lift those bags of money? Well, if the treasury guys lifted them in there, we can sure lift them out of there. I look, Dad, like a workman? Turn your cap around. You're supposed to be a laborer, not a jockey. And dirty up your hands. Go on, go on, stick them down there in the gutter. All right, all right. Now, now, boy, you just follow me, huh? We're going to walk slowly like we do this every day, huh? Around fifth, in the chestnut, and inside we go right up them back steps, okay? Uh, All set, huh? What would three workmen be doing going into the custom house? On a Friday, just before closing. Uh, Tommy, dear heart, uh-huh. we've only gone over this every day for a week. We're workmen. We're dressed like workmen. Yeah. We got bags of tools on our shoulders. No one's going to question us. A workman can get in anywhere. People are glad to see them. That means something is going to get fixed. Uh-huh. Your dad's right, Tommy. Nobody asks questions. They think the other guy must know, so they go along with it. Not wishing to appear ignorant, you know. That is human nature. Up we go. There we are. I'm sorry, the bag fell off my back. That isn't your bag, Tommy. That's BJ's bag. This is yours, the lighter one. Here. All right. Thanks, here. All right, now. now let's go, huh? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, why didn't my old lady give birth to a girl? Hey, uh, Noonan, I meant to ask you. How is your wife? She's still serving time for embezzlement up in Harrisburg. Crime really runs in this family. It's almost hard to believe that these two safecrackers, Big Jake Erdman and Tommy Noonan Sr., are about to pull off the heist of the century. With a little help from... Tommy Jr., we hope. They hope. But this is the way the story went. As much as we know today. I'll be back to you shortly with Act Two. Three safe crackers, actually two with experience, 
the younger one, Tommy, is just learning. Dressed in workman's overalls, walk up the steps into the U.S. Custom House on Chestnut Street, Philadelphia. Through the building, past the clerks making out bills of lading and manifests, and up the iron stairs at the rear. It's fairly close to closing time, and every government employee is hoping to get out at six sharp and have themselves a fine weekend. So, who would bother Big Jake and Big and Little Tommy? Ah, uh, hey, we made it. Hey, did you turn the key on the inside? Yes, we're all locked in. Snug as a bug in a rug, BJ. <laughs> hey, that clock makes some racket. Huh? That'll help us. Exactly what I thought, too. Yeah, you were right, Dad. Nobody even bothered to look at us. I, I don't know about you two, but I aim to take out our tools. A hammer, the jimmies, the drills, the chisels. Just lay them down there, and then lay me down. I'm going to sleep some. You're going to sleep right now, Big Jake? I sure am. Well, come on, Tommy. Don't just stand there. You take all the food out. It's going to be a long, hard weekend. We'll be plenty hungry. Uh, food? I didn't bring any food. You what? No, I just took those big paper bags and shoved them in my sack. They're tools, aren't they? I mean, am I right? They're tools? Huh? But is this tools? Two dozen sandwiches... Three quarts of milk, a roast chicken, a roast turkey, apples. Is this toast? Oh, boy, Noonan, your boy had me worried there for a minute. Oh, sometimes I wonder if it's really worthwhile to bring up your child into knowledge, handing him down the tricks of the trade, teaching him your profession. The odds are so great against you. Oh, oh boy. Uh, I wonder what time it is. How about we look at the big clock, huh? What for? Well, tell us what time it is. Tommy, that clock can't tell us the time. Well, it can't. Because the face of that clock, you know, the big round white thing with the numbers and the hands. Yeah, yeah. That's the outside of the clock, this clock, this big ticking clock. And the outside with the numbers from 1 to 12 faces the street oh, so that yeah. people out there can tell the time, not back here. Okay, now, I think we can start. I'll light the lantern. Uh, what can I do? What can I do, Dick? I think the best thing, Tommy, you line up the tools and hand them to us as we call out. Oh, right, no, I'd say right here, here, right about here in the middle of this wall is right where we ought to break through. Uh, Dad? Yeah, now, let me see here. Let me take a look at that blueprint. Yeah, I got it right here. Dad. Yeah, yeah, but take your right. Right smack dab in the middle. Uh, Dad, uh, can I speak to you? Uh-huh. Now? Uh, Dad, I'm, I gotta go. Go? What do you mean, go? Dad, you know, go. Oh, great. Jumping crab apples. You have to leave everything until the last minute. I'm sorry, honest. I don't even know where it is. Well, I'll find it. There's gotta be one out there someplace. I don't know. Supposing somebody sees well, you. Well, see me. You said everybody's gone home. Nah. All right. But you get back here as fast as you can. Yeah. Hey. Hey, what's the problem here? Well, come on. Let's start. Yeah, BJ, I, I have to beg your indulgence once more and apologize for my boy. Youngsters nowadays never plan ahead. I'll be back in a minute. dark out here. I'll just feel my way down the stairs. Hey, here comes somebody with a light. Uh, excuse me, sir. Could you direct me to the, uh, the, you know, the, uh... Oh, yeah. Let's go down the stairs. First right, and there's a door. It's marked. Uh Uh-huh. Thank you very much, sir. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, you. What are you doing in the custom house after hours? Hey, you, young fella, you come back here. Open this door. I'll be out in a minute. You're not supposed to be in the building. No one is supposed to be here. Oh, yeah? I didn't know that. This is after hours. The place is closed to the public. <laughs> then what are you doing here? I'm an eye watchman. Oh, well, I'm a workman. I'm working upstairs. Oh, uh, I know you're a workman. How do I know you're an eye watchman? Because I say I am. Where else would a sane man spend his nights for 31 years in a place like this? Well, you don't have anything to prove you're a night watchman. I've got these keys. Well, 
And I've got this club. Listen, young fella. Hey, uh, w- what do you need a club for? In case there's an intruder, one sock on the side of the ear, and that's it. Hey, no kidding. Is it that heavy? Let me see that. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Ooh, ooh. Ah, gee, where is that conk on the side of the head stuff really works? <laughs> Who's that? Night watchman. He's out cold. I dragged him upstairs. Jump in, Pete Boggs. All right. Put him into the room. Hurry up. Yeah. Hey. Hey, who's this? Uh, Night watchman, Big Jake. Uh, It was him or me. What are we going to do with him? I thought we could bump him off. It's easy. I could choke him to death while he's still unconscious. Hey, son, you've been reading too many mystery stories. We're burglars, not killers. No, but what if he comes to? Uh, uh, Noonan, take these rags, blindfold him and gag him. Huh? That's all we can do. Then let's get back to wife. Hey, I'll blindfold him. I'll gag him. I'll do that. I can do it. Hey, Jake, once again, I apologize. Oh, no, no, no need nothing to apologize for. I think you boys got a lot of the ball. See, if that watchman had come up here and hide us, we hadn't heard him. Well, he could have given the alarm. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you know, it's me who ought to apologize. My information was there was two watchmen. They was both sick. Okay, you ready now? With a, with a sledgehammer? I'm going to hold the chisel in just the right spot, right there. Okay. Now, give it a hit. Huh? Uh, ooh, that's who ate the dance. No, no, go on. Go on, another. Uh, oh, well, hold it, hold it. No, no. Uh, you're right. Look, we'll, we'll wrap the chisel in cloth. Uh, use the thickest one we got. All right. Okay, all set. Try it this time. <coughs> Okay. Okay, Noonan. Time to rest, huh? Oh, no. Oh. Whew. Whew. How long would you say we've been at it? Oh. An hour, maybe, uh, maybe even an hour and a half. Hey, hey, can I try? Can uh, I try it, Dad? Uh, son, I don't think you can even lift the sledgehammer, let alone swing it. You just keep changing chisels and wrapping them up and handing them to us. No, Tommy, Tommy, you're being mighty useful. Tommy, a fresh chisel. Come in. Thank you, boy. <clears throat> okay. Fire away, we gave. Come over here. Look at this hole. Ed. Boy, it's at least six inches. Uh, how thick is that wall, B.J.? Yeah, it's hard to tell. Uh, a couple of feet, I think. Say, Dad. Six inches. No, we're making progress. Oh, boy. I'm going to take a breathing spell. Five in the morning. Oh, that's a tick baby. Yeah, but we we got time. We'll make it. It's only Saturday morning. Dad, Big Jake, uh, the night watchman came too. How do you know? Well, he's moving around. What do you think, B.J.? Shall we slug him again? Or oh, what? Well, let's go see you. Hey, hi there. Is this tag too tight around your mouth? Yeah, he's nodding his head, yeah. Oh, I guess we could loosen it a little, huh? Oh, no, wait a minute. Is that safe? Supposing he starts yelling. It's five o'clock on a Saturday morning in this place. Who would hear him? All right, here, fellow. Hold on. Hold still. I'll, I'll untie this here and make it there. There. Is that better? Water. Water. Oh, sure. sure. Yeah. Well, we don't want you to suffer. Yeah. Nice old geezer like you. Hey, did we bring water? You're over there on the canteen by my bag. Uh, Listen, I'm sorry to put you to this inconvenience, sir. You no, know, but this is what happens in the life of a night watchman. Oh, t- thanks, Tommy. Here, now, I'll, I'll take this off here. Now, I'll hold the canteen to your mouth, Okay. Now, you do understand that it is essential for us to keep you blindfolded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Oh, thank you. That's better. You see, we, we got a problem with you, and uh, I'll be quite frank. Uh, my feeling is... Oh, no, 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 sir. I don't give you any problem. I'll just sit here in the corner, quiet, like I don't mind a bit. Good, good. Hey, uh, how'd you happen to get the job of a night watchman? Hey, it was a fluke. 
just a fluke. Thirty-one years ago. I was a chimney sweep when I come here to clean the chimneys. That's a long story. Yes, it sounds like a long story. Yeah, you're, you're an agreeable old fellow. Hey, supposing I leave the gag off. Oh, I sure appreciate that. You understand, a one tiny little peabody, you know, have to ask Tommy here to give you a little uh, sleep medicine again. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Oh, well, that's your way about that. I'm not sleepy. Uh, you agree then, not a sound. Not a sound. Hey, Noonan, how about you holding the chisel and let's see how strong Tommy is on it. Huh, it's only five. Too early for breakfast. Hey, Tommy, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, hit that sledgehammer there. <laughs> okay, Dan. Uh, it's a whole, whole that chisel steady. Here I come. Oh, my hand. Oh, my you fool. You broke my hand. Look, I, I can't even straighten out the fingers. I'm crippled for life, you big stupid idiot. Why did I have to have such a song? Oh, she did. I'm sorry. Oh, now keep away from me with a thing. They should be dropping it out of my foot. Oh, no, honest, Dad, honest. Oh, gosh, oh. I'm, I'm really sorry. That chisel must have slipped or something. Look at... Hey, hey, look, it flew into the clock and busted up the clock. It just stopped. Why do I care about the darn full clock? It's my heart. Hey, they don't keep away from me. My own son is trying to kill me. Oh, it was an accident, Dad. Honest, it was. <laughs> If you ever had the notion a life of crime is an easy life, put that thought out of your head. This weekend with Big Jake, Tommy Sr. and Tommy Jr. is no vacation. A watchman who's got to be watched. One burglar with a smashed hand. A younger one willing but not able. All because $10 million is not 18 inches away. We'll see how close the boys get to it when I return with Act 3. continue at exactly the place we left off. Tommy Noonan Sr. nursing his hurt hand, his son, Tommy Jr., trying to apologize, and in that clock room, suddenly, the air seems too still, too warm. Four people and a burning lantern can use up an awful lot of oxygen. Ray Jake, uh, listen, uh, with my hand and all, I, I feel... Funny, all of a sudden, sort of, uh, faint like. Okay, okay, now, uh, now you see, just lean on me. Now, here, let me have a look at that hand. Uh, huh? Yeah, what? You, what, what are you doing? You're killing me. Don't bend my hand. Well, I'm just trying to see if there's any broken bones. If there weren't before, they are now. Dan, Big Jake, the lantern's getting weaker. It's getting dark in here. Turn to wake up, you dumb bunny. Oh, why did I have to bring such a creature into the world? BJ. Yeah? L- listen, uh, I, uh... What is it? Need some air. This room, you know... All right, all right. Uh, hey, Tommy, Tommy, uh, unlock the door. Huh? What's that? He said unlock the door. What are you folding around with that lock? I'm trying to make it brighter, Dad, but it's only getting darker. Well, leave it alone. Forget it. Go to the door. Open the I'm door. I'm going, I'm going. Hurry, hurry. You want me to smother it to death? It, w- it won't open. Mm. Uh, uh, Tommy, where's the key, huh? Huh? When you brought the watchman in, you locked the door, right? Yeah, I know I did, but I can't find the key. I think I'm going crazy. I must have dropped it. What is it with you, Tommy? Are you working for the police or something? Well, I must have dropped the key, but... I can't find it. I can't even see it. Now, let's be calm. Everybody, calm, huh? I have a key. Huh? What did you say? I said I have a key. Certainly, he's got a key. He's the night watchman. Right. Okay, let me have it. Where is it? In my pocket. The big ring of keys. Naturally, he's got a ring of pass keys. Hey, uh, which key is it? Uh, I see. Well, where am I? What do you mean, where are you? Uh, what room am I in? It's a clock room. Oh, the clock room. Oh, yeah. Door to the clock room. Uh-huh. Which one? Well, it's the fourth 
Sakti after a second long thinky yeah. stuck on your left on my corkscrew. Yeah. One, two. What do you do? Uh, let me. Ah. Oh, BJ, thank you. Uh, the door's open. Now I can breathe. I feel better already. Uh, well, uh, now what are we going to do? Uh, how's the hand? Ah, oh, the heck with it. With my share, I can buy 50 hands, all of them with fingers. I'm not going to pay any attention to it. What's next, BJ? Well, I'm going to use a small hammer and chisel and make the whole wire, see? There are two other hammers if you want to do the same. I think one hard big bang with a sledgehammer that will be true to wall. But it's got to be made big enough to pull the bags out, see? Wait, say, Dad, did you know the clock stopped? What are you talking about? The big clock, it stopped. It's not going. So what? Well, remember before when I hit the chisel? See, that's how the clock stopped. Do you, uh, you think anybody will notice? Uh, who knows? Uh, I tell you, ask the watchman if they send people around if the clock stops on a weekend. Okay. Hey, he's gone. Huh? Who's gone? The watchman. He's not here. Well, he can't go far, blindfolded, with his hands tied behind his back. Tommy, go find him. Yeah, huh? Bring yeah. him back. What time is it? You getting tired, Noonan? How much time have we got? Oh, see, not much. An hour and three quarters, just about. We ought to use the big hammer again. No, 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 no. What we're doing is fine. Just fine. It's getting wider and wider. We'll be able to reach him like nothing. <laughs> oh, this is some wall. Yeah. Marble, brick, marble, brick. Whoever invented this stone sandwich knew what he was doing. Oh, I wish we had better tools. No, oh, everything you got from Jimmy the Tyke is first class. Don't complain. Uh, Tommy, hmm? Tommy, get us some fresh chisels, huh? Yeah. Hey, Noonan, how's the hand? Oh, I won't lose it, if that's what you mean. It's better. I just don't pay no attention to the pain, that's all. Tommy, what are you doing sitting there? Get us the first chisel. Well, I was trying to figure out exactly how we're related to Big Jake, Dan. I mean, how could you be the brother-in-law of the aunt of Big Jake's second cousin who's dead? My son is doing it again. He's trying to drive me bats. What's that done for us? Well, the difference is that if Big Jake's aunt and his second cousin are related, the way I figure it, I must be Big Jake's uncle. Will you get me a fresh chisel, Tommy? I'm asking you. Yes, yeah, sure, here you are. Yeah, one for you too, Big Jake. Thanks, Uncle Tommy. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's right, that's right, Nuna. Now, you cut away below me, right, right there, there, okay? Hey, are we going to make it, or aren't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll make it all right. The watchman is trying to say something. Look. We'll loosen his gag. Yeah, yeah. yeah, hold on, I'll just untie it behind your neck here. How's that? Yeah, thank you, son. Now, what do you want? You want to have to have an egg salad sandwich, would you? I'm pretty hungry. Will you listen to him? Egg salad, yes. There's bologna, salami, and cheese. And if that don't suit you, you'll have to do without it. Oh, no, come on, Noonan. Don't be so hard on him. He's an old man. No, he's getting on my nerves. Everything is getting on my nerves. Okay. Well, I'm a bologna sandwich. Oh, now, we haven't got much more to go. We, we mustn't let up. Noonan, I think you can hit it with the big hammer now. I'm with you, BJ, all the way. Tommy, will you hold his chisel? Ah, uh, you're, you're going to use the sledgehammer? I'm getting real mad at this wall now. Okay. <laughs> Here goes. Tommy, yeah. hold the chisel steady. Okay. I'm going to drive that thing clear through the wall to Harrisburg. I'm ready. <clears throat> hey, Dad. <laughs> it's through the wall. You did it. I knew this. <laughs> BJ, BJ, yeah. I did it. Yeah. I went through. Yeah. I hit something soft like a bag. I did it. It's the rhythm. It's really wonderful. <laughs> is it all we do is knock in the tin pieces, huh? It ought to all break off so we can reach in and pull out the bags of gold. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, the clock started again. Hey, maybe that's a good luck omen. We don't need luck now. Just wait. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, the hole's big enough now. Oh, stand back. Tommy, stand back. Don't yeah. crowd me. I'll How much time we got left? Uh, it's about seven. Folks start getting into the custom house about eight. All right, tell me. Uh, hold that lantern up. Yeah. What do you see in the hole, Bruce? Oh, bags. Just bags. Just bags. Uh, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll reach in there and I'll talk to you guys. Will you hold that, that lantern high, Tommy? Oh, yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> We're rich. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Hey, just keep <laughs> handing the bags to me, <laughs> Big Jake, and I'll toss them to Dad. Keep them coming. All right. uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't know where I'm going to spend mine first. Uh, well, I'm going to buy me a farm, son. Yeah? That's what I'm going to do. Hey, what are you going to do with your share, Big Jack? I don't know. Uh, I haven't made up my mind yet. Maybe something extravagant. Like take my gold and buy them the whole city of New York. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy me one of them foreign horseless carriages I've seen in the exposition. Hey, hey, Noonan, yeah, Noonan. You better get them bags piled up near the door. Oh, uh, we may have to make a couple of trips. Hey, hey. hey maybe the night watchman will give us a hand. Hey, hey you want to cut him in, Big Jake? Uh, Dad? Huh? What do you say? No. He's shaking his head. Why, he won't. What do you think of that? Son, every once in a while, you'll meet up with an honest man. Mm. But don't let that shake your faith in human nature. Hey, Noonan. Listen, my arm's getting tired. You want to reach in, huh? <laughs> Do I ever want to? <laughs> yeah, how much is each bag worth? Oh, could be thousands. Gee, uh, I didn't know gold was worth so much. Well, Tommy, civilization has gone to war for gold. People have killed for gold, died for gold. You know, Big Jake... I've never, ever seen one piece of gold. Never my whole life. Hey, son, here comes a bag your way. Cat! <clears throat> Say, Dad, be careful. That bag you just threw broke open on the floor. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Big Jake's picking up a handful. Oh. Hey, hey, <laughs> is, is this your gold? I didn't know gold looked like that. Where's my knife? Uh, what do you want a knife for, Big Jake? i got to cut open the other bag. There. Oh, gee, this gold sure looks like, uh, uh, what does it look like? I've uh, uh, seen those little coins before. All right, here comes another bag, gentlemen. Cut! Uh, will you hold it? Will, will you stop, Noonan? Why stop? Hey, what, what, what is it? Hey, hey, why are you cutting open that bag? Oh, uh, honey's. And that bag over there, too. Honey, uh, there's a dog. Pennies. I thought I'd seen those little fellas before. Hey, are they all gold pennies? They're all copper pennies, copper, every single bag full. What, you mean real pennies, not gold? No, son, not one of these is worth more than one cent. Well, how could it be, huh? The blueprint, oh, pennies, after all this. I'll tell you how it could be. He just feed me another bologna sandwich. I can't believe it, it's a dream. It's a nightmare. I'm going to wake up. I can't believe this. Hey, Watchman, Watchman, what do you know about the vault? There's more than $10 million in that vault. And there's three compartments. The first one has a gold. $10 million in gold, for sure. And uh, the third compartment, that'd be all the way on your right. That has all the banknotes. A good $3 million, they tell us. But that is, where you guys made your hole in the middle... That's where the copper coins are kept. The penny. Well, I could kill you. Why didn't you tell me if you knew? Well, I was blindfolded. I didn't know where you were making that hole in the wall. Son of a gun. <laughs> I'll be a son of a gun. <laughs> oh, that was a penny. <laughs> well, we... <laughs> You, you can always use a penny, you know. Yeah, yeah hey, 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 we blindfolded the man who could have helped us. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll take a bag full and make a down payment on a couple of sticks of chewing gum. <laughs> oh, that's a hummer. 
When did I tell the old lady I'm married, Mark? Business an hour is Sunday. I was going to go straight, I tell her. I was going to buy us a farm. I guess this means goodbye to the horseless carriage. I don't even know if you'll have enough to pay for a ride on a trolley. Oh, listen, no. No, look, we we, we got to go, okay? <laughs> the tools are worth more than the pennies. So grab everything you can. Uh, shove them uh-huh. some into my pocket for souvenirs. <laughs> yeah, me too, Dad. <laughs> hey, what time is that? Time to go. I hear people coming in downstairs. Now, oh. uh, follow me. Yeah. Uh, Tommy? Yeah? Where's the key? What key? The key to the door. We're locked in. Well, I never found it. I used the night watchman's key, remember? You took them from me. All right, old man. Hand over the pass keys. Come on. You never give me my second bologna sandwich. Listen, Watchman, this is no time for jokes. You feel these hands are on your throat? <laughs> the keys <laughs> on my face is the last thing you'll ever see. Uh, don't hurt me. I was, I was, I was kidding about the sandwich. I, I don't know where they are. I never got the keys back. Uh, where's that sledgehammer? Huh? Now, stand back, everybody. Stand back. Uh, uh, we, we better run for it. Oh, no, no, no. We'll just walk down these stairs... Nice and easy, slow like, keeping cool, huh? Walk through the building carrying our stuff, looking just like we would be looking if we'd been carrying bags of gold. Yeah. Hey, Big Jake. Yeah? The clock just struck 13. Which is exactly what Big Jake, Big Tommy, and Little Tommy did. Walked out slowly. For all the trouble they took that famous weekend during the Philadelphia Centennial, in their pockets was a total of $160.80. Nobody even saw them leave the building. All that was left was a trail of pennies right up the stairs into the clock room and the sad pile of bags of pennies and a hole in the wall. And, oh, yes, a blindfolded watchman sitting on the floor eating a sandwich. I'll be back shortly. Big Jake returned to New York, but he was never the same again. Word around Hell's Kitchen was his heart went out of his work. He ended up a bartender in a saloon on Dykeman Street. Tommy Noonan got a fair price for all the tools of his trade, and he and his wife went into chicken farming. Tommy Jr. also went straight and became a tour guide in that same old custom house. He never failed to tell the out-of-town visitors about the new burglar-proof steel wall just installed in the sub-treasury vault next door. So after all, nobody got hurt, nobody got rich, and it all ended pretty quietly. Our cast included Joe Silver, Robert Dryden, and Skip Hinnant. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.